نحمد و نسلی علی رسول کریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل اقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی و جعل لی وزیر من اخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا علما نافیا رزقا طویبا و عملا متقبلا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ سورہ الممتحنہ The surah was revealed in Madina. It has two stanzas, 13 verses, 60th by the order of arrangement and 91st by the order of revolution. In the 10th verse of the surah, it has been enjoined that the women who emigrate to Darus Salaam, that is an Islamic state, and they claim to be Muslims, they should be examined. And hence the title of Al Muntahina. This can be uh, pronounced as Al Muntahina or Muntahana. The first pronunciation will mean, uh, which means to examine the surah which examines and the second would mean that the woman who is examined the period of revolution is that uh, the surah deals with basically two incidences in the life of prophet وسلم, the first relates to hazrat hatib bin abi balta a little before the conquest of mecca who had sent a letter to the chiefs of Quraysh to trying to save um, or to trying to get shelter for his uh, children and for his wife. And the second relates to the Muslim women who had started emigrating from Mecca to Medina. And uh, this was after the conclusion of uh, the Treaty of Hadebia. And the problem arose whether they also were to be returned to the disbeliever like the Muslim men. But Prophet ﷺ clearly announced that uh, the Treaty of Hadebia, uh, they had mentioned that the men who come from Makkah to Medina, they will be handed them over. But these are women, so they will not be handing over, they will not be handed over. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suggested here that these women who are emigrating from Makkah to Medina, they and they also claim that they are Muslims, so they their belief and faith has to be examined and how examined will be uh, mentioned in these verses and how then Prophet Sallallahu would take a pleasure or oath with them will also be mentioned in these verses. So uh, it is very clear that the surah was uh, revealed in an interval between the Treaty of Hadebia and the conquest of Mecca. The three main parts of the surah are the first part uh, is from verse number one to nine, where a strong exception has been taken to the action of Hazrat Hati bin Abi Balta. And uh, Allah has commented on that and Allah has negated and Allah has also guided to the correct manner regarding our preferences of love and our priorities of relationships in life. And then, and the second part is from the verse number 10 to 11. And in this, a social problem has been settled when women were migrating, how to deal with those women and what about their, uh, what about their marital issues regarding their husbands or the wives who were disbelievers that has been given in detail. And in the third section of the verse 12, where Holy Prophet has been instructed to ask the woman who accept Islam to take a pledge that they would refrain from the major evils that were prevalent among the women folk of the pre-Islamic Arab society. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya ayyuhallazina amanu la tattakhizu aduwi wa aduwakum awliyaa تلقون إليهم بالمودة وقد قفروا بما جاءكم من الحق. O you who have believed, do not take my enemies and your enemies as allies, extending to them affection while they have disbelieved in what come to you of the truth. Having driven out Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and yourself, only. Only because yourself, because you believe in Allah, your Lord. Now, uh, at the start of the verse, in these initial few verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, 
explaining the whole event of Hazrat Hatib and Nabi Balta. So to start with, I think it would be much better if we go through the details of the incident so that the verses which have been sent down related to it, they will be more easy to understand. So now what happened was that when the when there was the signing of the Treaty of Hodebia in 6 AH, then following that, after some time, in the eighth year, uh, Quraysh, they, Abu Sufyan came over to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Quraysh, they broke the Treaty of Hadebiya. And so immediately after, as ordered and instructed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started making preparations for an invasion of Mecca. He did not tell anyone because for him, this expedition as ordered by Allah to prevent extensive bloodshed and fighting in the in the region of Makkah, which was the prohibited land, so which was the sacred land. So he did not tell anyone. And according to the instructions of Allah, he kept this mission a total, a total secret mission. He just confided in a few close, reliable, dependable, trustworthy companions, did he? <coughs> Did he share about the whole uh, expedition and the whole invasion of Makkah? So one of these was, one of these companions, I am just highlighting because we will relate to this in uh, the succeeding uh, discussion also. Hazrat Hati bin Abi Balta, he, he confided, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi confided and he told him about this secret mission and Hazrat Hati bin Abi Balta was then one of those reliable, trustworthy companions on which Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was confident that they he would keep his secret. So he confided in them and he shared the whole mission with Hazrat Hatib bin Abi Balta. Now regarding Hazrat Hatib bin Abi Balta, he was not a native from Makkah. He was not a native of Makkah and he had just settled. He was just a settler in Makkah. And uh, after the migration of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hazrat Hatib bin Abi Malta had also emigrated from Makkah to Medina, but his family was still in Makkah. His wife, his children were still in Makkah. And in Makkah, he had no family, he had no relatives or no tribes. So when he found out that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was planning of attacking the people of Makkah. He immediately had fear regarding his wife and his children. So to trying to make an attempt and trying to work the max he could, he just thought of writing a letter, letting out the secret attack or the secret mission of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which he had been confided by. He thought of writing a letter to the chief of the Quraysh and uh, telling him and telling them that since he was letting the word out and he was giving them the secret information, then on lieu of that and on return of that, he would expect that they would protect his uh, children and his family and wife. So what was this? This was the attack of shaitan. This was the attack of shaitan on a companion sincere enough. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had relied on him and he was a companion who had, who had immigrated. He was one of the muhajireen. He was one of the mujahideen of the battle of Badr. And such a sincere, trustworthy, reliable, dependable, sincere companion of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had been attacked by shaitan. That is why we need to be very, very mindful and careful and sensitive about the attack of shaitan on all of us and our children also. And that is why we need to seek Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's protection. A'uzu billahi minash shaitani rajeem. So frequently reciting these supplications, not only reciting these supplications, but, but to be very, very sensitive and very, very mindful and meticulously observant about when, where, how the shaitan keeps attacking all of us and trying to deprive us of our iman, our piety, our taqwa and righteous deeds. 
So this is where we need to realize all this. And then we, what we gather from here is the priorities, the priorities and preferences of love and fear. They are so very important that if these priorities of love, they are altered, they will leave to disbelieve, disobedience, and they will they will leave to disobedience of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because in the heart of Hazrat Abu Hazrat Hati bin Abi Balta, the love of the family became more than the love of Allah and the love of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The fear, the fear of this worldly loss, the fear of of difficulties and hardships and trials in this life became more than the fear of trials and torments of hereafter. So remember when the preferences of love and when the priorities of fear, they change, this will be disastrous for Iman and faith. We need to be mindful for all of these and we need to set the correct priorities and preferences in our life. So what happened is that immediately in those days when this planning was being carried on, there was a woman who had come from uh, Mecca to Medina. She was basically, initially she was a slave girl of uh, Bani Abdul, Mut uh, Abdul Muttalib. And after her freedom, she had adopted singing as her profession. And uh, when the Muslims, they had migrated, the companions of uh, Prophet Sallallahu they had immigrated from Mecca to Medina. She had no lovers and she had none who would spend on her and who would provide her with her requirements. So so she came in uh, in search of money and in search of this monetary support. She came in uh, search of the companions. She came from Mecca to Medina. And uh, she was obviously, she was returning without any support and help because obviously these companions had lost interest in any form of singing and dancing she used to provide. And she used to provide as an enjoyment for them. And she was returning that Hazrat Hatib bin Abi Balta realized that she was going back to Mecca. So she, he related with her. He related with her. He wrote down a letter to the Quraysh of Mecca, signing his name beneath and getting them and requesting them a protection of his wife and his children. And he handed over this letter quietly to this woman who was going back to Medina, uh, Mecca. And uh, he told her to keep it a secret and carry the letters to the addresses secretly. And he also gave her like about 10 dirhams for her service. Now when the caravan in which she was, she was leaving back, uh, verses of uh, the surah were revealed to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was given information about how the secrets was being led out by the letter which was being carried to the leaders of Quraysh. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked Hazrat Ali, Hazrat Zubair bin Alam and Hazrat Mithlar bin Aswad to pursue the caravan and to get to the woman and uh, to tell her, and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told them to make haste and 12 miles from Medina on the road of Mecca. They stopped her and they stopped the caravan. They got hold of the lady, Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and her, and who he very aggressively asked the woman to give, uh, to hand them over the letter, but she initially refused. And she said she didn't have any but when Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala and who he was even more aggressive and uh, he was very aggressively said that they would have to strip her and to search her. And then she came out with the letter from her hair plate and delivered it to them. This letter was brought back to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam there. It was open. It was read in front of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it contained the information to Quraysh how Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was making preparations to attack them. And in the end was uh, written the name of Hazrat Hatim bin Abi Balta. And Hatim bin Abi Balta was then summoned. And Prophet Sallallahu asked him why he had done all this. <coughs> this was like treachery. This was an act of treachery. And this was letting out the secret. So when uh, Hatim bin Abi Balta was asked, he came out with total true, true explanation he gave. He said that um, I do not, uh, sir, please do not make haste in any matter of mine. I have not done this because I have, I have become a disbeliever or um, I have preferred disbelief to Islam. There's nothing of the sort, but the actual state of affairs is that my near and dear ones are still in Mecca and I do not belong to the tribe of Quraysh, but I had settled there under the guardianship of the people of Quraysh. 
and uh, the families of all these immigrants of Makkah, they are still in Makkah, but they will be defended and they will be protected by their tribes and by their clans. But I have no tribe and I have no family and clan to protect my wife and my children. So being having no family and tribe which could protect my family. In fact, what he needed to have was reliance in Allah. It is not families, it is not clans, it is not tribes who protect, it is what? It is the protection of Allah, Al-Aziz Al-Jabbar, al muhaymin He is what, he is actually the power and the controller who protects, but this was a failure of reliance in Allah. So he said that I have no tribe which could give protection to my family, Therefore, I have sent this letter in order to keep the Quraysh under obligation so they, they would not harm my wife and my children. He had come out with the truth. And so Prophet ﷺ also commented that Hatib has told the truth. And uh, then uh, Prophet ﷺ forgave him and asked him to go and seek forgiveness. And Prophet ﷺ also, he seek forgiveness for Hatib and Abi Balta also. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who he was, he was very angry and he rose and he said, requested Prophet ﷺ that permit me, O Messenger of Allah, that I should cut off this hypocrite's head. He has been treacherous to Allah and his Messenger and the Muslims. And uh, Prophet ﷺ answered that no, he had participated in the battle of Badr. And you may not know, O Umar, that Allah may has looked favorably at the people of Badr. And uh, Prophet ﷺ asked him to do as you please. And uh, I have forgiven you. And other traditions report that Prophet ﷺ said that I have granted you forgiveness and I will ask your forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was it. And the whole process of um, this uh, was actually very important because the this uh, giving out of the secret by Hatib bin Abi Balta would have disastrous results. Because imagine if the people of Mecca and the leaders and the Quraysh of Mecca, they had found out that Prophet ﷺ was going to attack the Meccans, then they would have prepared their enemy, their army also. And there would have been a bitter war and there would have been a very very extensive bloodshed of the disbelievers and of the believers and of the muslims and this would have been in the sacred land of makkah so to avoid all this the mission was being kept secret but letting out the secret was obviously going to be very disastrous allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevented this by his true revolution to prophet sallallahu and what do we learn what happens is what allah plans what happens is what Allah plans and what Allah plans, he creates the conditions, he creates the resources for conducting his plan. And moreover, Allah is alimul ghaib, alamul ghayub. And last but not the least, we know that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did not have any knowledge of the unseen, any information of the future, until and unless it was revealed and given information by the revelations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here Allah says what? I now will start from the verse again. O you who have believed, do not take my enemies and your enemies as allies, extending to them affection while they have disbelieved in what came to you of the truth, having driven out Prophet Sallallahu and yourselves only because you believed in Allah and your Lord. If you have come out for jihad in my cause and seeking means to my approval, take them not as your friends. You confide to them affection, but I am most knowing of what you have concealed and what you have declared. And whoever does it among you has certainly strayed from the soundness of the way. So this is how Hatib bin Abi Balta was given a sound jolting by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now commenting upon the behavior of the believers to which the letter was being sent. If they gain dominance over you, they would be to you as enemies and extend against you their hands and their tongues with evil. And they wish that you would disbelieve. Never will your relatives or your children benefit you on the day of resurrection. He will judge between you and Allah of what you do is seeing. 
there has already been for you an excellent pattern in Ibrahim salam, and those with him when they said to the people, indeed, we are disassociated from you and from whatever you worship other than Allah. We have denied you and there has appeared between us and between you an enmity and hatred forever until you believe in Allah alone, except for the saying of Ibrahim salam, to his father, I will surely ask forgiveness for you, but I have not power to do for you anything against Allah. Our Lord, upon you we have relied, and to you we have returned, and to you is the destination. So the verses are actually negating the behavior of Hatib bin Abi Balta and his treachery and is guiding him to whatever is the rightiest path for believers to adopt. Our Lord, make us not object of torment for the disbelievers and forgive us, our Lord. Indeed, it is you who is exalted in might and vice. There has certainly been for you in them an excellent pattern for anyone whose hope is in Allah and the last day. And whoever turns away, then indeed Allah is the free of need, the praiseworthy. Perhaps Allah will put between you and those to whom you have been enemies among them affection and Allah is competent and Allah is forgiving and merciful. Allah does not forbid you from those who do not fight you because of religion and who do not expel you from your houses from being righteous towards them and acting justly towards them. Indeed, Allah loves those who act justly. Allah only forbids those Allah forbids uh, Allah only forbids you from those who fight you because of religion and expel you from your homes and aid in your expulsion forbids that you make allies of them and whoever makes allies of them then it is those who are the wrongdoers O oh, you who have believed when the believing women come to you as immigrants, examine them. So how do we need this verse teaches us? It enjoins basically three things that uh, it is needed to examine the faith of the immigrating women who present them as believers and not simply allow them to enter the Islamic Republic. And second is that basically Allah knows the truth about their faith. And uh, the third is that when it has been ascertained that they are believers, they will not be returned towards the disbelievers. So this is what the verse exactly enjoins these three basic things. Allah says, and if you know them to be believers, then do not return them to the disbelievers. They are not lawful wives for them, nor are they lawful husbands for them, but give the disbelievers what they have spent. But give the disbelievers what they have spent, and there is no blame upon you if you marry them when you have given them their due compensation and hold not to marriage bonds with disbelieving women, but ask for what you have spent, that is the dower and the bride's gift. Ask for what you have spent and let them ask for what they have spent. That is the judgment of Allah. He judges between you and Allah is knowing and wise. And you, if you have lost any of your wives to the disbelievers and you subsequently obtain something, then give those why then give then give those whose wives have gone the equivalent of what they had spent and fear Allah in whom you are believers. O Prophet, وسلم, when the believing women come to you. <coughs> When the believing women come to you, pledging to you that they will not associate anything with Allah, nor will they steal, nor will they commit unlawful sexual intercourse, nor will they kill their children, nor will they bring forth a slander they have invented between their arms and legs, nor will they disobey you in what is right, then accept their pledge and ask forgiveness from them of Allah. Indeed, Allah is forgiving and merciful. 
So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the verse 11 uh, enjoined that if women come from and they immigrate from Mecca to Medina, then <coughs> before admitting them and before letting them stand in a stay in Medina, in the Islamic Republic of Medina, they should be examined. And once they are examined, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enjoining that once they embrace Islam and they, they declare their Islam and they announce that they are Muslimat, the Prophet ﷺ needs to take a pledge with them. And the words of this verse explain what pledge and in which words does Prophet ﷺ need to take pledge with these women immigrating to the Islamic State. It was a manner of Prophet Sallallahu that he used to take pledge or oath when they entered Islam. But how did he go about it? We need to understand. We learn by traditions of Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that when he took pledge from the Muslim women, he never used to take the hand of any of us in his own hands. Similarly, it has been reported in a in a tradition that Prophet said, I do not shake hands with women because there was a woman who came and who wanted to take an oath uh, and take a pledge. And she requested Prophet that he should extend, stretch your hands so that we may pledge. But Prophet replied that I do not shake hands with women. And so how he used to take the pledge from Muslim women is has been reported uh, by, um, by a tradition that Prophet used to put his hand in a vessel full of water. And then the women also used to put their hands in the same vessel. So it was like an indirect act. There were times when Prophet used to raise his hand he used to raise his hands, like it has been reported in a tradition that Prophet Sallallahu extended his hand from outside the house and we extended our hands from inside the house. So it was like indirect, sometimes raising his hand above and women standing far away, they used to raise their hands or indirectly um, like uh, um, putting his hands in a water vessel, or sometimes there used to be that he used to hold a piece of rope or a piece of cloth or a string from one end, and the Muslim women taking the pledge or oath used to uh, hold the string from the other end. So this used to be like no direct physical contact or touching a Muslim woman, even by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the words of the oath which were taken by Prophet Sallallahu some of these oaths have been explained in the verses of uh, in the verse of the surah, but there were other things which he used to sometimes also take as a pledge, like as has been reported by Ibn Abbas in uh, Bukhari and Muslim that he used to say that he used to take the pledge that they would refrain from mourning over the dead. And similarly, it has been reported uh, by Zaid bin Aslam that uh, Prophet Sallallahu would administer the oath. And he used to say, he used to forbade the women to scratch their faces, tear their garments, bewail, and sing verses while mourning over the dead. And then Prophet Sallallahu would take uh, the oath that they would refrain from taking, with talking with other men freely. Like when needed, that was different. But free conversation and interaction with men, they would uh, refrain from. And some other pledge would be, as has been reported in Muslim Ahmad by Hazrat Abdullah bin Amr, that Prophet Wasallam made me to pledge that I would neither be veil nor the dead, nor display myself like women of the pre-Islamic age. So this was Umayma bin Ruqayya. She reported that Prophet Sallallahu took the pledge that she will not go about displaying herself like women of the pre-Islamic period of ignorance. So these were different additions to the pledge which Prophet Sallallahu used to make with the women. Verse number 13, O you who have believed, do not make allies of people with whom Allah has become angry. They have despaired of reward in the hereafter, just as the disbelievers have despaired of meeting, of meeting the inhabitants of the graves. Allahumma anis wakshati kabri, rabbana waqina azabul qabri, waqina azabul hashri, waqina azabul mizan, waqina azab al nar. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatum wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina azaban nar. 
ربنا اننا امنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار سورة الصف This surah was revealed in Medina with 14 verses, two stanzas, 61st by the order of arrangement and 109th by the order of revelation. The name of the surah, it derives from what Allah has mentioned in the fourth verse. Allah says, يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِهِ صَفًّا كَأَنَّهُمْ بُنْيَانٌ مَرْسُوسٌ That the Muslims, they fight in the path of Allah as if they were what? They were a strong constructed wall. They were in rows. They were in a saf. The period of revolution has been explained to be closely following the battle of Uhud. And the main theme and the subject matter of the surah is to, first of all, is to exhort the Muslims to adopt sincerity, to adopt sincerity in faith and to struggle with their lives in the cause of Allah. At uh, the outset, the believers have been bound to the effect that Allah indeed hates all those people who say one thing and they do other. And he loves those who fight in the cause of truth, standing like a solid structure against the enemies of Allah. So Allah has, uh, Allah has negated all forms of insincere, hypocritic manners and has promoted and encouraged Uh, Muslims towards sincere, true manners of Islam. In verses uh, five to seven, the people of uh, Prophet Sallallahu community have been warned that their attitude towards the messenger and their religion should not be like that of the people of Bani Israel. they had adopted towards Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. And then in verses of eight and nine, verse number eight and nine, a proclamation has been made with a challenge that the Jews and the Christians and the hypocrites who are conspiring with them, they may try hard enough, they may try hard enough to extinguish the light of Allah, but this light of Allah will shine forth and spread in the world in all its fullness. And the religion brought about by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it shall prevail over every other religion, however hateful it may be to the disbelievers or to the polytheists. So this was an open proclamation by Allah in these verses, number eight and nine. And then in verses number 10 to 13, the believers have been told the way to success, both here and hereafter, is only one, that they should believe in Allah, his messenger, and they should sincere. They should be sincerely exerting in the way of Allah with themselves and with their wells also. So this is the main subject of um, the surah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Sabbaha lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ardi wa huwa al-azizul haqeem. Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu lima taquluna ma la taf'aloon. قبر مقتا عند الله أن تقول ما لا تفعلون. Whatever is in the heavens, Allah says, whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth exalts Allah and he is the exalted in might and wise. O you who have believed, why do you say? Why do you say something which you do not do? Great is hatred in the sight of Allah that you say what you do not do. So the basic message and the meaning of this verse is that there should be complete agreement between a true Muslim's word and his deed. He should carry out into effect what he says, whatever he claims, whatever he declares, whatever he announces, whatever he says, or whatever he advises, he should carry it out himself in his personal deeds also. And when he has no intentions of doing the thing, or he has no power for carrying it on, then he should not go about telling others or advising others about it also. To say one thing and to do one of the most is what? To say one thing and to do and not to do it himself is one of the most hideous characteristics of a man. 
So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. It is what? It is like a manner of hypocrisy, as has been reported in Muslim and also in Bukhari, that traits of a hypocrite are four, that whenever he talks is a hadatha qadaba, that whenever he talks, he converses, he tells a lie, it's a ahada qadara, that whenever he makes a pledge, a promise, he, he breaks it, and then whenever he is entrusted, he is distrustful. He's not trustworthy. Is a hosama fajara that when he indulges or when he gets it, gets into a fight, he just erupts. He he is ill-mannered and he just is he just is abusive. So this is all what a difference in saying something and not actually doing is a manner of hypocrisy, which Allah has commented that is hateful to him. What is beloved to him? Verse number four. Indeed, Allah loves those who fight in his cause in a row as though they are a single structure joined firmly. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. And mention when Musa alayhi salam said to his people, oh my people, why do you harm me while you certainly know that I am the messenger of Allah to you? And when they deviated, Allah caused their hearts to deviate and Allah does not guide the defiantly disobedient people. And mention when Isa alayhi salam, the son of Maryam alayhi salam, said, O oh, children of Israel, indeed I am the messenger of Allah to you, confirming what came before me of Torah and bringing good tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name is Ahmad. So we learn from here that the glad tidings and the good news of arrival of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given by the books of the previous messengers also. The arrival of uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was mentioned, was informed, and was prophesied by Hazrat Musa Alaihi Salam, by Hazrat Isa Alaihi Salam, and has been mentioned in Injil and Torah also. Name of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his father's name, his mother's name, the name of the community or the locality or the city in which he will be born and bred and the name of the city to which he will immigrate, the, the characteristics of the rows of Salah of his companions. This has all been mentioned to the finest of details. And then all these, all these messengers, Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, not only had they given the glad tidings of arrival of, arrival of Rahmatullahi alameen, the seal of prophets, but at the same time, they had also, they had also taken the pledge that they will believe in him, they will support him, they will respect him, and they will help him. So that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here, because the people of the Jews of Medina, they were going against the pledge and they were going against the information of their book, which had been revealed to them in the verses of Torah. And uh, clearly remember that all those who go through the complete book of Torah and Injil, they definitely come across all these glad tidings which have been revealed in the verses of the two divine scriptures. So bringing good tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name is Ahmad, but when he came to them with clear evidences, they said, this is obvious magic. This was all what? This is obstinacy, stubbornness, and arrogance. And in fact, Above all, it was the world, it was the worldly love. And who is more unjust than the one who invents about Allah untruth while he is being invited to Islam and Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. They want to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths, but Allah will perfect his light, although the disbelievers dislike it. And it is he who has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth to manifest it over all religions, although those who associate others with Allah dislike it. Remember, may the polytheists, may the disbelievers, may the people of the book, may all of them, all the kafirin, all the fasikin, all the munafiqin, may all of the anti-Islamic forces, they unite to suppress this nur of Allah, this religion of Islam, 
they will not succeed to do so. And that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning in this verse number eight and nine. This religion was, this nur of Allah, this nur of Quran was made. It was made, it was created, it was sent down to be perfected and it will be perfected. It will be perfected. Remember, we need not worry about its perfection. We need not be in a state of despair about its perfection. It is all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has planned that it will be perfected. And so we need to believe that it will be perfected. So rather than just, just getting upset of how it will be perfected, what we need to worry about is that how much of our time, how much of our time, of our activities, of our struggles, or of of our efforts and our wealth and riches are we spending for the perfection of this perfect religion? Because those who will be deprived, those who will be deprived will be deprived here after. And those who achieve this goal of working, of striving and struggling for the perfection of this religion will obviously be those who succeed here and hereafter. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. O oh, you who have believed, shall I guide you to a transaction that will save you from the painful punishment? It is that you believe in Allah and his messenger and strive in the cause of Allah with your wealth and your lives. That is best for you if you should know. He will forgive you for your sins and admit you to gardens beneath which rivers flow and pleasant dwellings in gardens of perpetual residence. That is the greatest attainment. And you will obtain another favor that you love victory from Allah and an imminent conquest and good and give good tidings to the believers. O oh, you who have believed, be supporters of Allah. <coughs> o oh, you who have believed, be supporters of Allah, as when Jesus, the son of Hazrat Maryam alayhi salam, said to his disciples, who are my supporters for Allah? Man ansari illallah was the call of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. The disciples said, nah no ansarullah. This response, this, this manner, this behavior to respond to the call of man and swari in Allah has been so light. It has been so appreciated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah has mentioned this response, behavior, and manners of the disciples of Hazrat Isa alayhi salam more than once in Quran. And it has, it has been protected and saved in Quran for all those for reading and reciting and, and going through for all those who read and recite the Quran so that they learn what behavior and manner pleases Allah and what behavior and manner Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from all of us as his Muslim bondsmen. They said, we are the supporters of Allah and a faction of the children of Israel believed and a faction disbelieved. So we supported those who believed against their enemy and they became dominant. Allahumma ihtina sirat al mustaqeem. Allahumma ihtina sirat al mustaqeem. Allahumma alhimna rushtan wa arisna min shiruni and pusina. Allahumma arin al haka haka wa zukna tibara. Allahumma arin al batila batila wa zukna jhtinaba. Amin sumamin.